Yellow Colors Week 5, Cobalt, Heather, Blush and Sage. These colors are quite muted and they are made from, I'm going to show you now, the colors, the blue is ultramarine blue, a lazarin crimson red, which is a deep, almost like a blood red color. But before I want to show you, into the, show you the other colors, or go into the other colors, I want to show you the different ways of making purple and why you need magenta to make a bright purple. It's just, you can create a, a fairly bright color with a lazarin, crimson, but magenta give you that, magenta color is a color that just gives you that oomph, that extra brightness. Um, you can always tone it down, so that's a good hint, it's a good Good color to remember. It's it's a really good way to make purple. I'm also having phthalo blue, um, and I'm going to show you the mix there. So these are just the what's known as the the traditional primaries, and then the modern primaries. So that's ultramarine blue would be your traditional, and phthalo blue. This one that lo looks more like a green, more like a turquoise blue is the modern primary color. I'll go more into this in future Calori Combo um, color mixes. But let me show you quickly in this book what the colors do when I mix it. So there's ultramarine blue. It's that traditional primary dark blue. Like a clear, deep, strong blue. So if I'm going to mix So to turn that into a darker shade like the cobalt color I'm mixing if I want to make it darker I'm adding a bit of paint gray to it and that will give more depth to the blue. I can't make it bluer than it is but I can make it deeper. So I'm adding paints gray and that gives, gives me that, that shaded darker blue color. So there's my comparison with my color mixes, the color sample. If I want to make a purple using a lazarin crimson and ultramarine blue to create heather, I'm going to show you how that that come out. So it has that almost like a grape color. It's a purple that's a beautiful purple, but it's not an incredibly vibrant purple. So that's Lazarin Crimson. And as you see there, it's a strong deep color, but it looks more like a maroon color. If I add more blue to it, it will become a deeper, stronger wine red color. So there's ultramarine. And that same lazarin crimson. And that makes a, as I overlay it, that becomes a stronger, redder color. I'm playing around a little bit to see how I can create different purples. But it's it all. All of these colors retain a more of a muted, um, inherent muted quality. So I'm going to show you what happens when I mix phthalo blue with magenta. So this is not one of the colors in this week's prompt. I'm just playing with purple. The purple is a bit brighter because of the magenta. But the phthalo blue, this modern blue, doesn't really make it into a stronger purple. And I'm going to show you if you mix magenta with ultramarine blue, you'll get a really beautiful, very vibrant, very juicy purple. And then if you want to make that into a darker color, you can add paint gray to it and it'll give you a shade of purple. 
So that's just one of those things to remember in terms of what um, color you get when you mix red and blue. It depends what kind of red and what kind of blue it is. So spirit of experimentation, I'm mixing uh, the crimson with paints gray and I get a different kind of purple. It's almost like it has a green um, a green undertone to it. So the best purple is using or you get the best purple when you mix ultramarine with magenta. But I've mixed the the color for today is mixed with ultramarine and a lazarin crimson. I hope that makes sense. Just wanted to bring that in since I was mixing blues and purples. Now on to the blush color. Blush is like a kind of buff color but it's more pink. So I'm adding small amounts of lazarin crimson to it and you see that buff warm pink color. I'm going to compare it, I'm going to paint that down. So it's it's a clean color. So again it's very clean. So all the colors in that I'm using today will have a little bit of paint gray added and that will turn the color from a tint, which you get to get a tint when you have white mixed with the with the base color and you get a tone when you have both white and black or in this case paints gray paints gray has a black pigment in it but if you mix that together you get a tone experimenting a little bit and then on to green now this green is a sage green but it's a really pale muted green it has a a real vintage feel to it. For that I'm again using ultramarine blue and I'm using nickel azo yellow. Nickel azo yellow is my go-to yellow. It's, it's a bit of a chameleon. It can go in, in different directions. Yellow tends to be an easier uh, color to, to get different, to, to warm up um, any color you have and to brighten it. So nickel as a yellow is a is a good go-to color. So that's pretty much the color, but you can see it's still a bit clean. Therefore, I'm adding paint gray and it turns it into almost a neutral gray color. So the more paint gray is added to it, the more it will become a neutral color, a kind of gray. Okay, so this is my book where I put on all, put my colors and the recipes of colors together. I've got a small notebook for this purpose, and I'm putting down the green, and I'm mixing my pink, the blush color, just reminding me that's yellow, white, and a lazarin crimson mixed together. And then a tiny little bit of paint gray. And I get that again almost a neutral color. Just adjusting it, looking at the color mix I have and making it fit. Of course it doesn't have to be a perfect match. I'm just explaining here how I go about to get the colors. Ultramarine, paint gray mixed together much more ultramarine than paints gray to get that cobalt color which is just a lovely strong blue deep color clean blue color and then for the purple i have ultramarine and lazarin crimson It gives you a really dark color. It looks almost as as dark as that um, color with the, the 
that the blue and Payne's Gray mix when I first did. So I'm adding a bit of white to actually make the color more visible so it's not so 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 dark. So by adding a little bit of white gouache, I'm using Horadam white gouache and there I've got my colors. You see as it dries, it dries a little bit um, brighter and there I'm making a notation of my mixes so that I have it. If I want to mix more of it, it's just a little less and it helps to remember for future projects. And that is week five. I'm adjusting the color there a little bit, adding a bit more blue, adding a bit more of the white to make it a bit more clear, to make that, that heather color more pronounced. Okay, on to my sketchbook project. The colors in this project are not my favorite colors. I find it quite hard to paint with buff colors or like a, a soft pastel color like this. So I'm challenging myself using it as a base to work on my theme that I'm using for glory combo, sometimes use, is a house shape, just this form of a house. And I am adding blocks of green on top of that. So I'm using the sage green and it really has a retro feel to it. It has an almost art deco feel to me to it. So I'm playing with the idea of repetition and pattern and making almost like a kind of quilt pattern from this. I keep it in the shape of a house form. I don't want this project to be too big. This is just a little color study. So my reference. Adding some star shapes. I'm using round brush, pointed brush to paint. And when that's dry, I'm adding detail with the cobalt blue on top of it. Having these uh, cross sections in the squares. Repeating shapes and designs. So there's a, a uniformity. I'm using watercolor, it's core watercolor, and I'm mixing it with the gouache. So I get um, the paint becomes less transparent and have more, it's more opaque. And I lay it down here on top of the pink um, edge layer dries. So the marks that I make on top of it with the paint um, is applied on top and it doesn't smudge and it does not dissolve. The color does not dissolve into each other, even though it's a water soluble paint and not an acrylic gouache that I'm using. Some more marks, some more lines. I'm using an ultra round brush at this point. I think it's a size eight. Um, it's a silver silk 88 brush and this is a good all round brush. Now I'm adding some more of the blush color. So I don't have any white in my design here and I'm not adding any other colors even though with Calori Combo um, it works best to, um, to use the colors the, the four or five colors from the prompt and then in, you can use your discretion if you think it needs another neutral color or a dark color contrasting color you can add that um, of course you can add any other colors um, you like but to make it a, a challenge and to work within those colors and to make the colors work is um, really the ongoing 
uh, challenge the idea with um, with the limited colors. So as I just said, I'm not overly enthusiastic about the colors. It's not my go-to colors, and I find it quite muted. I, I would love to add something bright to it, but I'm sticking to it. And because it's not something that I feel overly enthusiastic about, I'm just playing with simple shapes. I'm repeating shapes, and I'm allowing myself to observe the color, observe what I can do with it without turning it into a big uh, and laborious process and leave it to be what it is rather than um, rather than doing too much. So here I have my design and I've painted around my original house form. I've given it a frame in the same uh, color, the same uh, blush color and on top of that I'm painting with blue having this scallop edge so it really has an uh, 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 an older feel to it like uh, maybe um, before mid-century I would say 40s 50s um, kind of uh, feel or maybe even earlier like um, an art deco anyway that's my uh, contribution for Glory Combo Week 5. I hope you enjoy mixing colors and I look forward to see what you create. Have fun!